Well, Tampa took a little bit of a stumble. They have certainly gotten back on track, and they've done so by protecting that young quarterback of theirs again. They really have enabled him early in the season. He was in such a good groove playing the game, making smart decisions, getting in and out of the pockets. But what happens early in the season? People compile playbooks against you. They get film on you. They figure out how to make it tough on you. Later in the season, you see him start to struggle lately, but he's still played well enough to be ranked fourth in efficiency in the league. Done a nice job for this team. 80 total touchdowns. He's a dominant player. Now that's throughout the course of a season you learn more about a quarterback. What does 18 seasons do to learn about a quarterback, Aaron Garcia? Holy cow. You only need to know one thing about AG. He is the toughest man to play this game. He will stare down the gun barrel and take a shot to throw that touchdown. It's going to be imperative on that those big guys up front to, to get him going early in the game. Had early season struggles in San Jose, but since making the move to Orlando has been brilliant. 34 touchdowns, just four picks, looks like the AG of old. He has been a dominant force at age 42. I can't believe I'm saying that. This ball has to get out and out in front. Davis shows off his speed, but you're going to see the nice push and run the post route. And he hasn't beat. That ball's got to be thrown into the end zone on the other side. But a great job of finishing the play by Coleman. Didn't give up on it. Played through the arms of the receiver. Pulls it away. That's a great job of understanding. Nice work by Preshay. It's just a good open route. They ISO him to the field. AG throws it out a little late, but he one-hands it off the hip. But he never drops it on the ground. And all you got to do is show possession when you come back up. When you come back up, you don't have to have feet down in bounds. You just have to show possession, which he does right there the whole time. Touchdown. So said Bonner, instead we've got you Sean Bradley at seven foot six to interview. How's that? Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> Are you joking me right now? Seven foot six, probably closer to seven foot seven. BYU legend, well known throughout the area. Sean retired in 2005. What's up for Sean Bradley right now? So is it uh, JJ Rattering gunslinger or fullback slash Earl Campbell style, four rushing touchdowns. Well, I mean, what's going on, man? You been in the weight room this offseason? From 18 inches, you know, it's, it's pretty tough, but uh, much further than that, I'm not sure what would happen. This is a play that Chris Grison made famous. You peek over here to pull the corner up, but then he tries to throw it around the official. The official will duck. Just throw it right in his head. He'll duck and get out of the way. This is a coverage sack, but you're going to see the outside release here. Goodman's got to get inside there. He can't run up the field with a guy going downtown. But you see the pressure from the Predators. Deeker just keeps drifting. And there's got to be a clock in your mind. There's got to be a clock in your head that you know it's time to get rid of that football. It's just got to go off. You can't keep backing up and backing up. Well, I think he does a nice job getting the ball out. He's been coached very well. He's had some time in this offense. This offense is... is predicated on getting the ball out of your hand on time, and he's done a great job. Max Sott is, is vigilant about those little things, getting the ball out of your hand, being able to throw a touch pass over the top of the defense. And when Coach James told us earlier that he has a strong arm, didn't impress me. We came out here and watched him throw some of these cell routes from about the 15, 12 yard line, and they dropped in the bucket. That impressed me. Kid has a very nice range in all of his throws. He's got a nice, nice game. Kyle, eight weeks off. Blood, sweat, and tears kind of game. You guys fought your way back. Right. How are your legs feeling right now? Uh, I'm a little bit tired, you know, running back and forth. I'm trying to get the plays in quick, so uh, Coach Moss not helping me out very much. And a little 16-yard scamper? Yeah, yeah, I'm not, you know, that's not really my forte. But I feel good. I feel like we're going to win the game. Tell me about your philosophy in the red zone. Uh, you have to be precise. You have to know your receivers. They have to know you, your offense has to dictate everything you do down there as far as running your routes. If you've got a three-step cut on the slant route, you can't go two steps. It's that precise. Need to take the time to know because you're going to see not only man coverage, but you're going to see some zones where they're five across the field, so everybody has to be on the same page. Talk about the adjustment because it seems every end zone is a little bit different in the Arena Football League. It really are. Some are, are traditional. They're eight yards deep, but some stop at five and round themselves off. So if you're a team that loves to go to the corner, in the red zone, it makes it a lot tougher to get that throw in there, and the defenders know that. 